All right, so let's um, let's look at the implications of what we just did too, because there's one special uh, feature here of, of, uh, of the node graph that we can do. So let's say um, that I had started with this black and white image and a remap. Okay, uh, this is my remap node. Now, now what's feeding into it are just the color values from what I'm going to remap. And what's coming out of it is the color uh, that I want to uh, be sending to my shader. Okay. So for example, if I wanted to start mapping a different color, um, wh why couldn't I just have another one of these getting the same values, but producing a new color to map into something else? For example, maybe diffuse, right? Maybe diffuse is a color I want, or maybe my reflected color. Could be anything. Well, I could take this remap, I'm gonna select it, and I'm gonna go up here to edit, and here's the important part. Uh, there We have duplicate, and we've got a couple options here. Shading network, which is everything we see here. Without network, which is just this guy here, all by himself, we get duplicated and put down over here. And here's the great one with connections to the network. I'm going to let this go. Now, look what happened. We've got another remap node, right? Looks the same. Here's remap number one. This is the one that feeds in. Here's the one that we just created with the duplicate. And you'll notice that I can do the same thing. I could pick a color here if I wanted and remap my colors to something new. Right? So technically, what I could do is I could actually use this, this one black and white image, and replace this one and this one, and feed them all into here and have everything controlled off of a single image, right? Because I could just make my values match the ones that I want, right? So I'm going to do that right now, but that is something to think about for the future. So here I've got uh, everything uh, set up the way I want. Um, if I graph this one more time. Um, so there's, so we're pretty happy with what we've got. Uh, I'm going to do two quick things and I'm going to make this quick. I'm not going to really explain too much of it, uh, but just something to chew on if you want to uh, start experimenting with these things. Uh, first off, these uh, little, little guys here are um, t placement nodes, right? These place 2D texture nodes, right? And, and you can pretty clearly see what happens here. I'm going to select this one and go back to my view. And you'll notice that if I start toying with any of these, right, it, it starts changing how it's placed on my uh, texture, right? And we can repeat it uh, multiple times, right, and have it uh, get doubled up. I can offset it by certain values in UV space. I can rotate a whole bunch of weirdness. You know, so there's all these little placements, right? So, you know, technically, um, if I ever wanted to shift these around a little bit, like maybe maybe I really felt like this should be just a touch higher on here, um, I could actually just offset this a little bit, you know, 0.05, oh, sorry, wrong direction, uh, negative 0.05, right? I could shift it up, maybe just a little bit, right? But notice, uh, if, if we can see here, if it's clear, well, I'll make it clear, we'll do that, right? Notice what happens is I can actually see my shift here in the editor. 0.5. Well, I should be able to see it. Maybe it's my translate I can see. 0.5. Right. It's calling me a liar now. I don't think it's updating my images. Ah, there we go. So now we can see my rotation. Unfortunately, none of my other ones are actually sharing that rotation, right? Because uh, it's only happening with this particular node. Sorry for that lack of updating, but that's, that's exactly what's happening there. So instead, uh, if we do make changes, we definitely want them all to be sharing them. So one way we could do that is we can simply uh, 
take all of these that we don't want. Okay, well, and we'll just make one master control. Well, and we'll drag it at middle mouse button, drag, drop, and say uh, default. And then do the same thing here, default. Do the same thing here, default. All right, so now that, that cleans our graph up a little bit because we don't have all these little things hanging off. And if we do make any changes to this, it's going to be reflected in every single version of this file. Okay, so that's good news. The last thing we want to do is talk about reflection, reflection and refraction. Right? We do have these aspects in our bottle right? because it is see-through plastic. Uh, so I'm going to go down to my ray trace options in my blin and take a look at these. First one, refraction. If we just take a, first we want to make sure that we're in a render quality that's going to support that. Draft. Let's bump ourselves up to production. Right, and I'm just going to do a quick little IPR drag over this. Now, we don't have anything in our background here, so we're not going to see much in the way of, um, of refractions, but we will probably see a difference in how this very uh, outer edge uh, looks and, and how it gets rendered. Okay, so like right now, when we see our outer edge, it will have, uh, we'll, we'll see sort of a distinct double wall. Right, you can see that here. It's just a pretty straight up double wall, which doesn't really have a realistic look to it. Right, but as we start um, amping up our, our look here, I'm going to turn on refractions, and you know, pick a number. Um, you could look up a refractive index uh, that you want. Um, pick something kind of low. You'll see that already the look here is going to start shifting into something else. Right, we're going to lose that wall, and we're going to start picking up some highlights from other places and it's going to have a different look so that's uh, step one a little bit of refraction you can pl play with um, and finally reflection okay when we turn on reflection um, let's see let's get a, an area that's going to reflect do an IPR and I'm just going to drag across the center here so I just have a small area to render because this does start getting heavier you'll notice that I have no reflection turned on. If I bump this up to our default values, 0.5, right, a lot of things start happening. It gets a little bit uh, crazy, okay, because um, 0.5 is a very high number. And while this may look like it's right to you, it's not right at all. Um, one thing that we have to always remember about reflections is that almost all materials, in fact, all materials, have a different reflective value from the center as they do to the outer edge, okay? So this is a really um, much more advanced step, right? We've gone through the basics of texturing, but we're gonna take this one more step and, and leverage the node graph uh, with a new node and take a look at doing something pretty cool here. All right? Uh, and hopefully this isn't on the mind-bending side of things. Right? It should be pretty straightforward. I'm gonna look at my shader here. So our shader is getting nice and com complex. I'm liking it. All right. So this is a, a fun little step. I like this one. We're going to go to uh, our 2D table. We're going to create a ramp. Right now, a ramp uh, that gets created is basic. You can skip this part if you're, if you, if you get lost. It's not a big deal. Um, our place 2D is interesting because what it does is it tells the ramp where to exist in the UV space, the one and the zero. I'm going to get rid of it. We don't need it for this. And then I'm going to look over here and I'm going to go to my utilities. And down here in utilities is all the way at the bottom, close to the bottom, is one called sampler info. And this is a node that gives a lot of information, right? A lot of crazy stuff. But this one here, this facing ratio, is very interesting. It tells it tells um, the renderer how much the image, or I'm sorry, the surface is facing the camera, right? If we were to look at this from the top, um, here, over here, top, right? And our camera was straight down here uh, where it says top. The surface right here is pointing right at the camera, right? And as we move to the side here, if we draw a line perpendicular to the surface, 
it starts facing more and more away from the camera until we get here, in which case it's not facing the camera at all. And then from here it goes out. You know, even here it'd be facing the camera just a little bit, right? So we can actually take advantage of this, right? That number that tells us how much it's facing the camera. It's gonna be a number between one and zero, which is very similar to the number between one and zero on our UV uh, texture editor, right? So our UVs go from one to zero and our ramps go from one to zero and the facing ratio goes from one to zero. So let's take a look at how we can utilize that. I'm gonna go here in the node graph editor because it's pretty the easiest way to show this. Okay, our ramps, let's scroll in here. Let's open this up. And we're gonna open this up. So here's our facing ratio right at the top. And our ramps have, let's see here. Hmm. Where did it go? V ramp. Hmm. It's not showing me everything I want to see. So we're gonna do this the a uh, little bit more interesting way. I'm gonna middle mouse drag and drop. And I'm gonna go down to other. Okay, now other means that like it's not found in here and it's harder to find somewhere else. We're gonna say other. Now you see that I have a whole set of selections, right? But on the one side, we see facing ratio that we know that goes from zero to one. And up here we have this UV coordinate. Now it gets grayed out when we click on that. I'm gonna spin this down. And my U and my V coordinate are are uh, are there. So that that would be what the place 2D texture would be showing us, right? Now what's interesting is that when I click on the ramp, you see it's a V ramp, right? So it's going to look at the V value, and that's how our ramp works. So the connection editor allows us to connect facing ratio to the V value. So you'll notice there'll be a little arrow that appears when I click on V. Oh, okay, I got a V value. Okay, so now the ramp goes red, right? And I'm just going to go ahead and I'm going to drag this now into my reflected color. Okay. Now, you see what happens? Here we are. When the surface isn't facing us anymore, it's turning red. When it's facing us entirely, it's blue. Right. So that's interesting because what we can do is we can say that, well, maybe the color, the amount of reflection we're getting and when it's facing us is actually going to be almost nothing way down here. But when it's, when it's facing away from us, like in the real world, as we get further away from the facing uh, our eyes, it's going to be more and more reflective. Okay. Now, I also like to move this from linear to exponential down, which shoves this transition down a little bit further. Okay. So what does that do for us in the end? This little trick. We'll take a look at this and then we'll be done. Probably take some tweaking, but let's render it. Okay, slowly building. So what happens when you start turning things on like ray tracing and refractions and reflections, you start getting a bit of a slowdown I'm also recording my screen, so that doesn't help. Okay, so a little over bright on the inside. That's something we'd have to look into. Um, but what's nice is we get uh, a set of reflections on uh, on the outer edges uh, that that are diminished on the interior. Right, so this is starting to feel a little bit better. Now we've lost some of that plasticky look. It's looking a little bit more like glass, but with a little bit of adjustments to our reflection, our reflection, our refraction, and maybe uh, adjusting this blue color. Maybe it needs to be a little bit darker now that we have these other features turned on. But this is the methodology that you could take to start uh, creating the textures that you want to create. Okay. All right. Well, thank you very much, and I hope that helps. 
Shut up and sit down.